Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Kart Rider Drift on PC, the Steam version. So we're going to start with the optimization of Windows and after that we're going to go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have a, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people <laughs> are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimizes your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically. And you just lower the software like that. And you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software. And also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2% to 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, I'm going to go to graphic. So the first one is display mode. Super important to play full screen. You don't want to play window or borderless. Uh, it's causing some random stuttering. So go with full screen. Resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So if you have like a two, uh, 2K monitor, go with 2K, 4K, 1080p. Refresh rate, I recommend to choose your refresh rate. Uh, I had some weird bug at auto. It was using 60 Hertz. So super important to use the amount of rage, refresh rate that you have on your monitor. I recommend to disable vertical sync. You, you want to lower your input lag. Uh, so super important to go with off. And FPS limit, same thing. I just play unlimited because I want to lower my input lag. But if you have issue with your thermal, maybe don't go too crazy with that. You don't want any stuttering when you're playing your game. So maybe lock your amount of FPS with the amount of Hertz that you have on your monitor. Booster win effect, you can expect a 3% boost in your FPS if you go to general and a bit better visibility, so I recommend to go general. Um, texture and texture filtering, if you have more than 4 gig of VRAM, you can definitely play very high 16. 3 gig go high and 8x. And if you have something less than 3 gig, like 2 gig or even like 1 gig, go with general or maybe 2x, something like that. And it will really help to make sure that you have the proper amount of VRAM. For model detail, I didn't see a big difference between low and general in my FPS, like 1%. General to I had 3%, so that's why I recommend to go with general. If you have access to NVIDIA Reflex, I recommend to using it, so select Reflex over there. Anti-aliasing, I recommend to go with TAA and put anti-aliasing at low. You don't need anti-aliasing in this game and you will gain a nice 6% boost in your FPS. Shadow, it's pretty much the same thing. You don't really need shadows when you're playing a game like that. So just go low, general and low. And here you can expect 16% boost. That's huge. Shadow in this game, is, is, it's tanking. Like the shadow distance, you will see that your FPS uh, will drop a lot when you put it at very high. Pulse processing, I recommend to go with low also. Uh, not a huge gain, but it's more about visibility. So 4% over there. Uh, motion blur, you want to deactivate it. You will not gain any FPS, but you don't want to use that in a game like that. Particle effect, same thing, go with low. Not a huge impact on your FPS when you just look at your game, but when uh, stuff will happen, explosion or whatever, uh, you are going to make sure that you stabilize your FPS because I see a lot of drop when I use very high on my laptop. So super important to go with low. Screen space reflection, ML inclusion and volumetric fog. I recommend just go with off. You want a clean game with a lot of FPS. So deactivate that. So this is pretty much it guys for my Kart Rider Drift guide on PC. If you have any question, just come in, in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.